Hello fellow Martians, uh, this is a brief tutorial on how to use our Lime Survey software to write surveys. Uh, this recording can be stopped, paused, uh, rewinded, or fast forwarded at any time. And if it's your first or second time viewing, uh, it's helpful to definitely take some notes. Uh, so the first step is getting logged in. And if you haven't already received your credentials, uh, make sure to contact CTO Josh Hernandez. And uh, if you have your credentials and are ready to log in, uh, the website is survey.marketactionresearch.com forward slash admin. And when you go to the site, it's going to ask for your username and password. And once you're logged in, um, to view one of the uh, projects that's active or inactive, uh, you can make your selection on this right hand side here where it says surveys and then you would just click on the survey to open it up. Um, but we're going to go over that later on and uh, on editing an existing survey. So if you're looking to start a new survey, uh, the first thing is to click on the button on the uh, immediately to the right of where it says on the survey section. and. Um, and then you're just going to click on the button and it's going to to create, import, or uh, copy a survey. And uh, the first thing that's going to pop up is the language selection. So you want to make sure that you select um, you know, the language that's most appropriate. And then type in a description, the title. Um, just so you know that once the language and title are set though, you won't be able to make any adjustments. So I'm just going to call this uh, test project one. And the description uh, generally, we're going to leave blank. Um, we'll come back to this later on, but just so you know, in short, we leave the description blank um, because otherwise it's going to display in every single question page and it just takes up more space. And uh, we actually won't probably use this unless it's specified under some type of project instruction by the client. And uh, for now, we're going to use our standard MAR welcome message, which is going to display on the very first screen once the user is going on there and we'll just use what's called our standard um, MAR welcome message which is version A and you might want to adjust a few things on here um, you know, it says the survey is being conducted so we can have a better understanding about people who like wine but if it's something that's more specific this would be our opportunity to write in something that's more direct and catered to the actual survey and then it's going to ask for an end message well, the end message is just something that displays at the very end of our survey, and it just gives something to let the user know that they've completed the survey. And we use also our standard um, end message, which is also version A. And some of the things you might want to make sure that are correct on here is, um, you know, the project number, and you might want to adjust some of the details. But for now, we're just going to put in what it is that we have here. And the end URL uh, gives the respondent an option to be redirected to a different page after completion. Um, this will appear on the end message screen during the last portion. So for right now, we already have one that Josh has created and it's just pretty much a general thank you page and it gives the respondent the option to also like us or follow us on Twitter. And the description is um, what it's going to say when the link displays. So instead of this, we're just going to put, you know, this link is for those who are serious, not curious. And that will display instead of the link showing up. Uh, the administrator of the survey, uh, it's, gen it's already set to your username and your admin email. And uh, the bounce email, if it's not already set, you want to set it to info at marketactionresearch.com. And that way, in that case, um, it will be redirected to info and I will also see the email. So uh, and we can also set a fax number too. So once the survey is completed, it could send an email and a fax to um, notify us that the um, project has, or one of the uh, respondents has filled in a survey. So once you're ready, uh, just go ahead and click on the save button. And now the first step is going to be creating a question um, group. So now, that you've hit save, the survey's officially been started. Um, the question group will help you categorize questions into sections. And we'll go over in our advanced training course how to set skip patterns and conditions using these groups. Um, because in some cases, 
we may need to skip over a whole question group depending on the way the respondent answers. And so we're just going to make a question group. And the first thing it's going to ask for a title. Um, for this section, we'll just call it section A. And uh, we're going to leave the description blank. Um, the purpose of the description on the question group would be to preempt the respondent with a message. Uh, keep in mind that the title of the question group will display above the question. And if you don't wish to have a title, uh, you just want to leave the section blank. Um, and how you would do that would be to put it in the title and then go back afterwards into the edit screen where you would say edit text elements after this group has been saved and then just delete it completely. So for now we're just going to hit save. And uh, now it's time to put in our first question. So you'll notice that it's creating different layers. Uh, the first one here is just all the way back. This is the general survey um, for this top row. The second row is actually for the question group, and the last section is for the individual question, um, or the questions inside the question group. So to add your first question, you just go ahead and click on the third um, little piece of paper with the green circle with the plus sign inside to add a new question to the group, and uh, then it's going to ask for the code. Uh, the code is going to help you differentiate the questions from each other, and the code will not be uh, displayed anywhere. It's just for internal purposes. So we'll just call this one uh, question intro. And um, you know, then you just have to put in a question here. So we'll just put in uh, what type of business do you own? And then you'll see underneath it there's a help section. And this prompts the respondent for uh, what action we're seeking. So. We could say just, you know, type in your answer in the box. Okay. The next portion of this would be to select the question type. Um, if you actually hover over the question, you'll see that it will display what the question is going to look like, so it kind of gives you a heads up. Um, these aren't really set in stone, it's more made to be generic. Uh, depending on what theme you use, will determine the actual. Um, style of which it displays, but just so you know this gives you a general idea of what question. Um, so for this one use short free text and you'll notice that it had a little map on there um, to the left and how you get rid of that for instance if it's not a question of geographic location would be to go under show advanced settings and then you would go to the location and then just make sure that the mapping service is off. If you want it to be on location, then you can hit uh, Google Maps, and then it will actually display that map that it showed earlier. Um, you also see that there's several other settings under here, such as you know IP as default location. Um, so it actually will, if you have the mapping service on, it will track the user by their IP address if they're at a set location or if they're on the go. Then it will give the uh, user um, an easier time to pinpoint where their actual location is. Um, as well as, you know, if you wanted to save the country, city, state, and uh, postal codes. Um, you could also set the zoom level on the map, so which way it defaults when you, um, when they, when the map automatically loads by IP address. And you can also set in a, a map width and height. It's automatically set at 500 by 300, um, but all these can be adjusted. And then there's other things that are under here that, you know, we can go over at another time. You can set a timer so it will warn the respondent after a certain amount of time is hit and um, you can also have a countdown message so it lets the user know that you know time is running out and um, you know there's other options here as well but we'll go over that more in the advanced training um, so after you hit that and you've set the correct one uh, you can just close it by clicking on the button again and if you'd like to make the uh, question mandatory you can also hit yes this will make the user have to enter in an answer. Um, and you also have the option, just so you know, to upload files at the very bottom for questions. So once you are ready to move on and actually edit the or view the question, you just hit save and the question is created. Um, one way that you can view the question is by hitting preview this question and it's going to show you what it's going to look like. So you know what type of business do you own and this portion under here, this question is mandatory, just lets the user know that they have to enter in an answer, and this is where your help section box came in. Um, 
and it's going to open this up in a separate tab so you can just close that out um, and if you want to go back and let's just say change the question then you just hit on the little pen uh, paper with a little pencil and then you click on that and it's going to open it up again so let's just say um, you know you have other options here where there's single choice it probably wouldn't make much sense to do a single choice question um, although you could do something where you know let's say it's like a like a list like a radio um, and then it's going to give you a few more options always check when you click on the question type uh, what the other options that will change here so if we let's just say yes for instance it's going to give the user the option to put in or type in an other response so let's hit save um, and then it will automatically give you a little warning to tell you that it needs an answer um, you need options to this question and how you would change that is by clicking on the edit uh, answer options for this question which will appear when you select this group set and then you would just type in the responses and automatically there's going to be a code you could change this if you want uh, to be something else and this will help us back on the uh, data processing side of things so it's best that we leave these um, the same but you could put in something like you know market research firm and then to add another option you just click on the plus sign um, you can say advertising uh, agency you know etc so after you're done you hit save it'll tell you up here the answer options were successfully saved and then to view the question again you just click a, on this little paper with the wheel and then it should load <laughs> alright I guess it's not working right now oh spoke too soon alright so right here it's going to tell you um, then you, you can make the option and then go from there but this is just a way to view what it made that you look like uh, or the question that you made what it's going to look like and uh, again if you want to change some of the other options you can go back and edit the question and let's just try one more and um, let's see these are the arrays wouldn't really make sense the equation you can do gender uh, you can switch language halfway through the survey if they wish um, numerical inputs so that would only be for numbers Ranking would be if you wanted to rank from, you know, uh, you know, from least to most on some type of rating scale. Uh, text display. This would just give them uh, you, you the opportunity to just put in something where it's just displaying text, so you could preempt users that way too without doing a description. Um, yes or no question. If you want it to be a huge free text, it just gives them a bigger box to type in. Uh, long free text is, you know, of course, a little bit smaller. Uh, multiple short text you know this would be if you know you wanted the user to answer independently to each uh, potential attribute and uh, multiple choice so I guess if this wouldn't really make sense for this question but if you did switch it to that and then you hit save um, it's gonna ask for the different attributes and then you know you can say I'm just gonna put in you know market research um, firm advertising agency you know etc and this will just keep letting you go and if you want to remove it then you just hit the uh, minus sign and it'll delete it okay so now that you want to view the question let's go ahead and hit preview and hopefully everything loads and this would give them the option to select multiple so you know if they worked at a both a market research firm or advertising agency uh, this question is probably not the best example but it will give you an idea of how this all works and um, that's pretty much our tutorial for how to get a survey started um, definitely check our advanced training and uh, we look forward to any questions you may have thanks so much for watching